So the first thing we're going to do is to make the granny hat square and for the purpose of this tutorial I'll be making use of this two scrap yarn that I have here. I think this is in the color milk and this is in the color pink. But for the original bag that will be attaching later on, I made use of white and um, wine. Um, I want to be working with this because of this dark wine color it's going to be kind of hard to see my stitches with this color so i'll be making use of these two shades of yarn this is going to form the hat part and this is going to form the square for this bag we'll be needing this granny square this is a hard granny square and if you've seen my other tutorials you'll notice that there is a slight difference in how this hat granny square looks as you can see the hat is leaning towards the corner of the granny square so this is how a normal hat granny square would look and i think this is the number fourth granny square i taught in my last tutorial and you can notice that the hat shape is actually leaning towards the center of the granny square unlike this one this is leaning towards the corner of the granny square okay so if you've done the other hat square tutorials that i've made You'll find this tutorial very easy and if you've not tried any hat square tutorial before don't panic trust me this square is quite easy to work on so now let's get into the tutorial and make a beautiful dot bag so to begin our hat granny square um we're going to start by making a magic ring so there are actually two ways to make a magic ring i will show you the first one now and show you the second one later then you decide the one that you feel is more easy for you to make. So to make the first magic ring, you're going to place your hand like this and wrap the yarn that you intend to use to make the hard part of the granny square around your two fingers, like so. Create a sort of like an X shape, then go around once more. This is how it should look. Now you're going to take your hook, insert it into this loop and pull this through. So now chain one to secure, like so. And that's how to make the first magic ring. Now let's make the second one. So to make the second type of magic ring, you're going to Create a slip knot, and this is how you make a slip knot. Then chain three, like so. So, once you have three chains, you're going to go back into that very first chain that you made, and set your hook and make a slip stitch so yarn over pull through then pull through this loop so this is how you make the second magic ring this is for people that find it hard to make the first magic ring but for this tutorial i'll make use of the first magic ring so now to begin the granny squares i'm making use of the first method for the magic ring and that is this so even if you're making use of the second method once you slip stitch just chain three so now that i've pulled up my loop i'll be chaining three as well
Now, once you have this, you're going to go ahead and place 11 more double crochets inside this magic ring. Now, if your magic ring is too wide, you can top on this to make it smaller, like so. So now I have a total of 12 um, double crochets in my magic ring. I forgot to say earlier that this chain 3 that you did, this starting chain 3 you made here, counts as a double crochet stitch. So this plus 11 double crochets worked into the magic ring should give you a total of 12 double crochets for row 1. Now we are going to tug on this to make this tight, like so. You can see it's now tight. So if you're making use of the second magic ring, you won't need to tug on any um, loose end to make it tight. It will actually be tight when you're done. So the next thing we're now going to do is to slip stitch into the third chain of our starting chain. So now this is the chain three that we made. We're going to skip the first, the second, and slip stitch into the third, like so. Yarn over, pull through, then yarn over, pull through, like so. And that's it for row one. The next thing we're now going to do is to make a half double crochet in these three chains that we have here. So that we're going to be making a half double crochet in the same stitch that we just slip stitched into. So to make a half double crochet, we're going to yarn over like so. And insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. You should have three loops on your hook. So yarn over, pull through the entire three loops, like so. Then in the next stitch, we're going to go in with four double crochets. So this is how you make a double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, you should have three loops on your hook. So now we're going to yarn over and pull through just two loops. So now you'll be left with two loops on your hook, then yarn over, pull through the remaining two loops. So now go ahead and place three more double crochets in here. Remember I said we'll be making four double crochets into one stitch. So I've made a total of four double crochets into the stitch. Now we'll be making a half double crochet and single crochet in the next stitch. Now to make a single crochet, you're going to insert your hook in here, yarn over, pull through. You should have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through, two loops. In the next stitch, we're going to go in with one single crochet like so. In the next, we'll go in with two single crochets. If you can notice, our heart shape is slightly beginning to form. So now, in the next stitch, go in with a half double crochet. In the next, go in with a half double crochet. So, in the next stitch, go in with two single crochets like so in the next stitch going with one single crochet we are now kind of repeating what we did here for here so in the next stitch going with one single crochet and a half double crochet 
in the nest we'll be going in with four double crochets in the next stage we're going to go in with a half double crochet and that's it for row one so now to close up this row we're going to slip stitch in the middle of this three starting chain and this double crochet that we made here that we made in our first row and that's it for row two for row three you're going to go into the first stitch that we have here and that's the half double crochet from the previous row and make a single crochet now in the next make a single crochet so for the next three stitches we are going to be making two single crochets in each of them so two single crochets in here two single crochets in the nest now two single crochets in the third stitch so now we made two single crochets in three stitches now in the next five stitches we're going to be making a single crochet in each of them one two three four five you would notice that we are now at the half double crochet stitch here now we are now going to go in with one single crochet and a half double crochet in that stitch like so then chain one so we're now kind of forming the tip of the hat now in the next stitch going with a half double crochet and a single crochet so we're going to be repeating the same pattern that we did here but in the reverse kind of so in the next five stitches we'll be making a single crochet in each of them so this is one two three four and five so in the next three stitches we'll be making two single crochets in each of them So I have already made two single crochets in three stitches. Now in the next, we go in with a single crochet and the very last stitch would make a single crochet. So to close up this row, we're going to insert our hook back into here and make a slip stitch like so. Chain one and this is where the rows for the heart ends so we're going to cut off this loose end and work up the square parts of this project then pull out this like this and this is how the heart looks like so guys we're going to start off the square parts so the first thing to do is to take out your second yarn as your second color of yarn and insert your hook in here remember this is where we've been making all our slip stitches then yarn over pull through so i kind of like to work with both of my loose ends like this to kind of hide it like so so now go ahead and chain up a total of six chains so this is one two three 
four, five, six. So with my method, you can notice that I've hidden the loose end for this milk yarn and also made my work tighter. So in that same stitch, you're going to prepare for a double treble crochet. And for that, you have to yarn over three times. And insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. You should have a total of five loops on your hook. Then yarn over, pull through two. You should have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. You should now have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two again. You'll be left with two loops on your hook. Then yarn over, pull through the remaining two loops. So for the remaining part of the hat, we're going to be working in the back loop only. So on the next stitch now, that is this single crochet here. Always pull your work like this so you can see it clearly. Because if you skip this first part, you would mess up your project. So now, in this first stitch, instead of inserting your hook like this, you're going to insert your hook in the back loop only. So this part of the work. So now we're going to be making a treble crochet. So you yarn over two times, insert your hook in the back loop, like so. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, then yarn over, pull through the remaining two loops. So I'm going to explain the back loop um, thingy again because. Um, this space was kind of hidden. So in the next stitch now, we are going to be placing a double crochet. So if you notice, there is like a V-shape um, stitch on each of the stitches we're supposed to work in through. So instead of working in under like this, you're going to insert your hook in this back loop of the V-shape. So the loop does not facing you directly. You get. So now work in. A double crochet in the next stitch then in the next we'll go in with a half double crochet in the next two stitches we're making a single crochet so this is one and in the next stitch we'll make another single crochet like so so in the next going with a half double crochet in the next going with a double crochet now in the next stitch I'm going to yarn over two times and make a treble crochet like so chain up two then yarn over two times and make a treble crochet in that same stitch and please always work in the back loop so this is how it looks so far now in the next stitch we're going to yarn over two times and make a treble crochet like so so in the next six stitches till we get to this chain one space, we're going to be placing a double crochet. So that is one double crochet in the next six stitches. now add the chain one that we did in the last row of our hat shape that's here so we're going to yarn over two times and make a treble crochet in that stitch so chain up two yarn over two times make a treble crochet in that same stitch like so so just note that all the stitches that we've been working trebles and chaining up two count as a corner stitch so now in the next seven stitches we're going to work a double crochet that's one double crochet in the next seven stitches so remember to always work in the back loop only
So I've made a total of seven double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in the next, we're going to make a treble crochet, chain two treble crochets in the same stitch. Like so. Remember, this counts as our corner stitch. So, we're going to repeat the same thing we did at first here for this side, for this remaining part of the heart. In the next stitch, go in with a double crochet. In the next, a half double crochet. Like so. In the next two stitches, we're making a single crochet each in both of them. So in the next stitch, we're going to go ahead and make a half double crochet. Like so. And in here, we're going to make a double crochet in the next stitch. So now we're left with one stitch remaining. Remember not to place a stitch in here because this is this is the side that we did the slip stitch. So now go into here with a treble crochet. And remember, treble crochet is yarn over two times. So now we're going to slip stitch into the fourth chain of our starting chain. So this is one, two, three, four. So just go into the fourth chain and slip stitch like so. So we would have two chains remaining and this is going to count as a corner stitch. So now the next step is to slip stitch into this chain space like so and chain up three. Then into that same chain space, make a double crochet like so. Chain up two. Then you're now going to make two more double crochets in here. Like this. So in the next stitch, which is here, go in with a double crochet. So now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the stitch till we get to this chain two space. So you should have a total of nine double crochets. So now in this chain two space, we're going to work two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in here. So we're going to make one double crochet in each of the next nine stitches so we get to this chain two space. So I've done a total of nine double crochets. So I'm now going to walk into this two chain space with two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets like so so if you notice we are making our corner stitch into the corner stitch beneath and this is how the work looks like so far i think i love this color combo than the other one i'm actually going to work with but who knows, I may make a bag in this color soon. So now we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing on this other side. That is a double crochet in each of the stitch till we get to this chain two space and a double crochet in each of the stitch till we get to the starting chain. And I'll meet you guys when I'm done with mine. So I just want to show you guys how 
I work my last stitch. Now at my last stitch, I'm just going to slip stitch into the third chain of my starting chain. So one, two, three. Make a slip stitch in here. And we are done with this square. Look how beautiful this color looks. I'm definitely making a bag with this color combo. So chain one and cut as usual. Now, let me show you how beautiful this looks. <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon my enthusiasm. So, this is what you should have at the end of the day. So, just go ahead and make 12 more extra of this. And I think it took me about three hours to make mine. And I was doing some things in between. I was actually seeing a movie. So, if you're not seeing any movie and you're not doing anything that would distract you, you should take it up to like two hours to make the other squares as you can see this is really really easy to make and it works so fast so just make 12 more extra and we'll come back and join this up so guys once you're done making your 13 squares please pardon how shaky the video might be my workspace is really really small so i'm trying to like hold my camera while i explain so once you're done this is how you would arrange your squares so I know this might not make sense, but this arrangement is very key because yesterday I already stitched up everything and discovered that I didn't arrange it very well. So I'm kind of like redoing the tutorial. So the way you place your hats, now for the first two, the hat is facing upward, the second facing upward, and this other side as well. But from here down, to this part, the hat is facing downward. So if you don't arrange it in this format, you would have a lot of issues because by the time you turn your work, you would notice that the shape of the hat does not really align. I'm going to kind of show a clearer view on how this is being placed on the screen in the next slide. So, the way I intend to sew up my granny squares is that I'm going to take off this SX, this SS granny square. So if you notice, this part kind of consists of two granny square, one in the middle, two, one in the middle. So this is the only row with like three granny squares at once. So I'm going to take off this and I'm going to take off this as well. How I'm going to start sewing up my granny squares is that I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way like so till I get to here. Once I'm done, I will go down like this till I get to this point. So when I'm done with this entire piece, I would go ahead and attach these two granny squares that I removed earlier on. Please always remember to arrange it properly. Then I'll stitch all the way through like this and stitch all the way through like so. So I'll briefly show you guys how to stitch up the work because if I show the entire piece, it's going to be repetitive and this video will be really long. So I'm going to stitch from here to here and here. So I'm going to take out this extra squares so you don't really need to take out yours if your workspace is pretty big you can actually just take it aside but for me i would need to take out mine so i can show you guys clearly how it is and please and please if you need if need be go back and check the arrangements again on how to place your hat so you don't make mistakes so now let me show you guys how to join so the first thing to do is to insert your yarn into your dani needle so i'll be making use of the white yarn but if you want to create a kind of contrast to your bag i would advise to make use of another color so first of all i'm going to stitch up these two squares together then i'll move on to here and stitch here and here 
once for all. Then move on to the hostage distance together. Very important to note the front part of your work. So the side that you can visibly see the front loop of the hat is the front part of your work. That's the side. And this is how the back looks like. So once you've identified the front and the back of your granny square, we are now going to turn both of these squares to the back. So I'm going to turn mine to the back like this. Always hold on to the side that you're going to be sewing. And for this other part, this is the side we're supposed to sew in. So I'm going to flip it to the back like this. So now bring your work together and hold on to it like so. So this is how we're going to sew up our work. Sorry, I had to zoom in. So now to begin, we're going to go ahead and identify because this is the part we are going to be sewing our granny squares so you're going to identify the chain in the chain two over here in our corner stitch that's close to the side that you'll be sewing so this is my chain two this and this but i'll be working in this one because it's close to the side that I'm going to be attaching my stitches. Another thing to note is we're going to only be placing our darning needle in the back loop of each stitch on both sides. So this is the stitch. I'll be placing my hook in here for the first one. And in the other side, I'm also going to do the same thing. Look for the chain that's close to the part I'm supposed to attach and that is this chain this chain here so I'll be going into the back loop this is the front loop so I'll go into the back loop like so then in order to secure this I'm going to go ahead and tie this up like so. So tying up to secure is optional. You can decide to just leave it and hide it when you're done. But I like tying mine up. So the next thing we are now going to do is to insert our dani needle in the next stitch. Remember the back loop. So the back loop for this side is the stitch facing you. So you insert your dani needle in here and in the back loop of the other square so the back loop of the other square is this stitch not this one and pull out your yarn so in the next insert your dani needle in here and in here pull out the yarn so in the next, you insert your dani needle in the back of this and the back of the next stitch and pull out your yarn like so. So you're going to repeat this process till you get to the chain two here. So now I've walked my way up till I go to the last double crochet before the chain to space. So I'm just going to show you guys how um, it looks like at the front. So this is how it looks like. So let's go back and continue stitching. So we're now going to insert our darning needle into the next chain, into this chain space. So we'll be walking into the very first chain. Remember to always insert your darning needle in the back loop only. So once we've done that, open up your work once again and go in with your third granny square. Please always remember the pattern of arrangement for your granny squares so that you don't make a mistake and have to start afresh like I did yesterday. I wouldn't wish that for anybody. So now turn your granny square to the back like this. 
And now we're now going to be walking into these two granny squares. You're going to insert your hook into the next granny square. Remember to always walk in the chain that is directly close to the side you intend to stitch. Now you're going to do the same for here by inserting into this chain. Remember the one that's close to the side that you intend to stitch and pull through. So now you're going to repeat by placing your darning needle into the back loop of every stitch to join. Till you get to the two chain space. So I've actually sewn my piece till I got to my last double crochet on this side. So I'm now going to walk into the next chain like so. So now open up your work to the front so you don't mess up the arrangement. This is how our piece looks so far. So I'm now going to attach the fourth granny square. So based on how we arranged this piece, the fourth is supposed to be facing upward like so. So that's why I said it's very important to be very conscious of how you place your granny squares for this project. So now you're going to turn this to the back and stitch up both sides. So you're going to go into the next chain. Remember to walk in the chain in the side you intend to join and into the chain of the other square as well. Then we're going to repeat what we've been doing and that is sewing up our stitches in the back loop only so you get to the chain to space. So now I've worked into all the double crochet stitches. I'm now going to walk into the chain space. The first chain space, like so. So now flip your work and see how this is looking like already. So this is how my four granny squares look joined. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the entire piece and I'll show you guys how it looks before I attach the two granny squares I took out earlier. So guys, I'm already done with mine. Remember I said I was going to work like this, like this, like this. When I got to this part, I went down like so. So the next step now is to now attach this other granny squares that we removed. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this like this. And attach this like this and i'll meet you guys when i'm done with mine so guys i've attached both squares to this side so now i'm now going to fold the work this is the middle so i'm going to be folding the back into two like so so the back should look like this when you fold it so now you're going to fold this this way and fold this in like so so this is the this is the last two granny squares that we just attached. So you fold it in like so. Then with your darning needle, you're going to attach from here to here, down to this part of the bag to close. So now we have just basically working on the sides of the bag and do the same for here as well. So you attach from here down to the side of the back to close and I'll meet you guys when I'm done with mine so this is the front of the work and this is how it looks like now we're going to go ahead and make the border for the back before we make the handle so now we will be starting from the side of the bag like this so turn your work and look for the nearest double crochet 
to where you attached your granny square and this is mine let me zoom in a bit So this is mine, like so. Go into the stitch and attach your yarn. Chain one. Then in that same stitch, work a single crochet, like so. So. In the next stitch we're going to make a single crochet as well so we'll be placing one single crochet in each stitch till we get to the two chains on top that's the two chains we made over here So once you've got into the two chain space, go ahead and make three single crochets in that chain space. So I've done a total of three single crochets in this chain space. So I'm going to go ahead and make single crochets all the way down till I get to where I attached my granny square. We'll go into the next stitch with a single crochet Now I've worked my way from here to here and placed my single crochet in the last double crochet. As you can see, we still have a chain one space here. So go into the chain one space with your hook, yarn over, pull through like so. So now we're going to make a single crochet decrease. So you're not going to yarn over and finish up, but you go into the next stitch. This place, this place that you attached your granny squares in the middle. So yarn over, pull through like so. You should have three loops on your hook. So now we'll go into this chain space from this other square. This side. Yarn over, pull through. So now you should have four loops on your hook. So you're going to yarn over and pull through the entire four loops like so. And that's how you make a single crochet decrease. So this is how it looks. So you're going to repeat this decrease in the middle of your granny squares. That is here, here, and here. Then you work one single crochet in each stitch till you get to your two chain space. Then you will now place three single crochets in here. Then work one single crochet in each of the double crochet stitches. Then until you get to this chain one space, you work your single crochet decrease and go up like so. So I'm done with my first row. Um, your last stitch should be a single crochet decrease. So go ahead and slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch that you made for row one. So now chain one and make a single crochet in that same stitch like so then single crochet in each stitch till you get to where you made your three single crochets increase so i've gotten to my single crochet increase that is where we made three single crochets in one stitch so if you're going to have issues identifying the center of these three crochet um, stitches i would advise that you place a stitch marker after you make the second stitch 
or you count your stitches as you work. So now I'm going to place in the first single crochet increase, I'll go in with a single crochet and in the middle, which is here, I will make three single crochets. So after making your three single crochet increase, go into the remaining stitches with a single crochet like so. And once you get to this place that we did a single crochet decrease, you're going to go ahead and make a single crochet decrease in there like so so yarn over pull through yarn over pull through like so so now you're going to go into each stitch with a single crochet so you get to your three single crochet increase so once you get to middle of your single crochet increase you're going to go in with three single crochets then walk your way down with single crochets in each stitch So once you get to your decrease again, you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, insert your hook in here, yarn over, pull through, and make your single crochet decrease. So now repeat this process. Repeat exactly what we did for here, like single crochets till you get to the middle, you make three single crochets, then go down with single crochets and make a single crochet decrease. So do that till you get to where you started up your work like so. So by the time you're done with row 2, you should end with a single crochet decrease. Now slip stitch into the very first single crochet that you made for the round. Chain 1 and make a single crochet in that same stitch. So, so for rows 3, 4 and 5, we're going to repeat the exact same thing that we did for row 2. So I'll meet you guys when I'm done with mine, then we'll make the handles. So guys, I'm done making my 5 rows for the border. So I'm just going to slip stitch, chain 1 and cut. Oh, I've already done my slip stitch. So I'm just going to chain one, like so, and cut. So that's it for the border for our bags. We're going to go ahead and make the handle for the bag. So to make the handle for this bag, you're going to look for the stitch close to where you made your three single crochet cluster. And for me, this is mine. And this is my three single crochet cluster. So after you've identified that, attach your yarn and chain one. So you're going to make chains long enough to your desired taste. I don't want the handle or back straps for my bag to be that long, so I think I'll make a total of 60 to 70 chains. So I ended up making a total of 65 chains. So for the other side, which is here, you're going to look for the stitch close to where you made your cluster stitch. So this is mine. So I'm going to insert my hook in here and make a slip stitch. So the next thing you're going to do 
is the slip stitch into the next stitch, like so. Then turn your work. So now you're going to make single crochets in each of the chains that you made for your strap. Remember the slip stitch doesn't count as a chain, so just go into your first chain and make a single crochet like so. Now single crochets in every stitch till you get to where you started from. So once you're done with the last chain, you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And that should be on top your first single crochet cluster. So now slip stitch into the next stitch. Turn your work and make a single crochet in each stitch till you get to the end of the row. So once you've gotten to the last stitch, you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch here and make a slip stitch. So now you're going to repeat row 2 for 2 more rows. So for row 3 and row 4, you'll be repeating row 2. And I'll meet you guys when I'm done with mine. So I've made a total of 4 rows, I'm now going to slip stitch into the next stitch here. Chain 1 and cut. So now you're going to go ahead and repeat the same steps you use in making this trap for these other sides as well. And I'll meet you guys when I'm done with mine. So I'm done making my straps. So just go ahead and hide your loose ends. I'm really looking forward to seeing pictures of your work. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And you can reach out to me through any of my social media platform. Bye.